Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, the CEO of Las Vegas Heels, and we are here in the studio today with Alex Silver, my good friend from the Clark County Medical Society, and we're going to lo learn a little bit about the Medical Society and an upcoming event that they have. For those of you that are new to Inside Medicine, we broadcast live right here in the studio every Thursday. And if you miss it by chance, you're able to catch us on our website, our YouTube channel. And let me look down here. Our iTunes, our Roku, our Stitcher, and our Spotify, many of which I don't know. But anyway, you can catch us there afterwards. Inside Medicine brings you an insider viewpoint of what's going on in the world of health and medicine right here in Las Vegas. We like to bring in the movers, the shakers, those that are doing amazing things, bringing medical travelers to town, those that are developing medical education programs, and today, those that are doing amazing work for our physician community, those that are delivering the care uh, to the patients out there. So welcome to the studio, Alex. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Yeah, it's good to have you here. We haven't had you in the studio yet. Welcome to our humble abode. I know this is a fantastic outfit, little best kept secret. I never knew this was even here. Pretty cool place. So we're going to talk a little bit about your award session coming up, and we'll reveal the name later. But before we jump in, we want to get to know a little bit more about the Medical Society and a little bit more about you. Uh, so let's start with the Medical Society. Give us a high level. What does the Clark County Medical Society do? The Clark County Medical Society has been around since 1955. We work in collaboration with the Nevada State Medical Association statewide organization. And Clark County Medical Society, affectionately known as CCMS, is the local organization that works to protect and advance uh, the rights of physicians and their patients. So our main focus is to make sure that we protect that relationship. So it's a group of doctors. It is. It is doctors, residents, fellows, physician assistants, and medical students. So do you have to be a doctor to join? you actually have to be one of those four groups. Okay, so either a doctor or preparing to become a doctor. Absolutely. And so the continuum, so you've got medical students, you've got residents, you've got doctors. What was the other bucket? Or Physician assistants. Okay, got it, got it. So it's all those that are delivering the actual care, touching bodies and delivering care to patients. Yes, under the tutelage guidance of a physician. Okay, so what's the overall riding mission of the Clark County Medical Society then? So the Clark County Medical Society, we do a number of programs to achieve our mission um, of doing their advocacy, their continuing education, networking, mm -hmm. leadership opportunities. Um, one of the things, as you know, we work really closely together on is addressing the critical shortage of physicians here in our community. So there's mission related and the business side of medicine. And I'm assuming Clark County means that your your boundaries are Clark County. Our boundaries are Clark County, except for where um, if there is a local county to us that does not have their own society. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we do have physicians in Pahrump um, okay. that are members of Clark County Medical System. Got it. And talk to us a little bit about your leadership. And I think we're going to bring up a screen here that will show... Uh, some of your leadership, some of your board. So how is your Clark County Medical Society kind of structured? Who provides that leadership? You run the day-to-day -day operation, but tell us a little bit about the organization. Yes. So um, our current leadership is Dr. Jeffrey Roth, plastic mm -hmm. surgeon here in town. His uh, term is actually up this uh, June um, and will be taken over by our incoming president, president-elect Dr. Daniel Burkhead, a pain uh, management doctor here in town. Um, so our leadership is designed in a couple of different uh, manners. One, we have our executive council, which is consists of six members. And then um, our board of trustees works in collaboration with the executive council um, made up of physicians in town. Last year, we actually added two new positions to our board of trustees for the first time in our history. One being a representative for the medical student trustee as well as a resident trustee. So they both have one-year terms and have full voting rights, which we're extremely proud of. And I think really shows the new direction that our community as well as our organization in particular is heading. And then we have several members of the community directly related to physicians and healthcare that are make up the rest of our board as ex officio members. So tell us a little bit about the the why between the patient and the physician, the relationship and the role that the medical society plays there? 
I think that's a really great question. And I think um, one of the myths, if you will, of um, medical care now is, you know, when we were little, you went into the doctor's office and in the exam room, that was a sanctuary. And whatever the physician said was automatically assumed to be the correct answer. And as time and technology and the industry has changed, more and more of those decisions are being taken away from the physicians themselves, where they've gone through extensive training, many in over 10 years at a minimum, um, and those decisions are being taken out of their hands, and they're, it's being affected of how they are able to directly care for their patients. So that's a really big concern of ours and how we help the doctors make sure that they can deliver that quality care to their patients that historically they've always been able to do. Yeah. So besides that, the physicians, they're facing a lot of challenges today. Um, many of us have been up in Carson City. Uh, many of us will be going to Carson City. Uh, we don't want to get into that topic too much. But right. what is the biggest challenge facing the physician community today? In our community, there's two things. Um, one, as a national, um, well, they're both national challenges in, in their own rights. But here particularly, there's two main issues that we really need to address. One is burnout. Um, and the second is the critical shortage of physicians here. And those do go hand in hand, particularly in our community. But those are not issues that are um, just relevant to us here, either in the South and Clark County or even Nevada as a whole. Yeah. And a topic that's near and dear to Las Vegas Heels that we're pushing for, I imagine, goes across your court as well as reimbursements. And, uh, you know, I hate we need to get rid of the word reimbursements because it's not a reimbursement. It's a payment for service rendered. Uh, but I imagine that's a challenge that the physician community faces every single day. It does. It is. Um, I think exactly what you just said. Reimbursement is a poor choice of a word. No other profession, quote unquote, works for free or reduced fee, um, and they need to be able to cover their cost. Part of the challenge also is, is that in a state like ours, where we do have such a critical shortage of physicians, and in some specialties, we are literally at drought critical stage, which I know you're aware of, um, we need to be competitive, not only when we're recruiting physicians to come here, but to stay here. And as we know that there are now two medical schools here in the South, which a third one coming hopefully online here shortly, we have one in the North. Do we as a state, as a community, want to be in the business of educating doctors for other communities when we so desperately need them here? And so we need to be able to make sure that when um, these students, when residents are talking about coming here, when the existing practices here are recruiting physicians to come from elsewhere, that we can give them such a wonderful life that you and I know is here, yep. but the challenge is, is that can they, you know, make the living that they're trying to do? Many of them come out with several hundred thousand dollars worth of debt, and that's a really big investment. Yeah, that's a challenge that we're going to have to face pretty soon, and it's a big one, probably one that we could create a whole show around uh, because reimbursements, it's complex. Um, it it is a complex issue. I don't think that average patient is aware of how it affects their care, how it affects um, everything. Um, one of the things that we talk about all the time when we're out in the community and talking to patients is if they could just go behind the scenes for a day with a doctor to understand why sometimes they're waiting so long in the weight room. It's not because the doctors are sitting on their phone playing Candy Crush in between, just waiting to, you know, when they're good and ready. A lot of times their staff is still trying to work with insurance to make sure that what they're going to do is going to be approved so that a, a patient doesn't get a surprise bill. They're also making sure that they can see everyone, like we just talked about the critical shortage. Yeah. Um, it's a big deal. There's a lot. It's There's a, a big we, deal. you you yeah. talked about doing we'll a whole show on it. You could do a series on that. Another day. But before we do that, let's talk about you. You're new to the medical society, but not. It's been a year and a half. -ish. Yes, this July I'm going on. I'm approaching two years. Right uh, July will be two years since I've been with the physicians. Tell us about your background because you bring a unique background, and the medical society is very fortunate to have that. 
You are so sweet. I will pay you later for that one. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have uh, been here in Las Vegas this month. Actually, is my 14th year anniversary. I think I, like most Las Vegas residents, um, came here originally, never knowing or even thinking if I would wind up making this home. And uh, I'm very fortunate that I did. I think our community has a lot to offer, and uh, we need to do a better job of doing that. And that will also, as a side note, um, affect our ability to recruit and retain Absolutely. physicians. Um, but my background is, I think, a little unique from what uh, CCMS has had in the past. Uh, I bring extensive experience in the nonprofit world and in the for-profit arena as well. Um, I was an event planner for the better part of my professional career, doing everything from celebrity golf tournaments to high-end weddings, product launches, social events, corporate events, and the like. And uh, I get to bring all of those skills to the table and work with a dynamic team at CCMS to advance the cause of the uh, physicians and their patients. That's cool. That's cool. And so, you know, obviously that changes the dynamics of the Clark County Medical Society. You've implemented and instituted a bunch of change over there, which is awesome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about some of those changes and what they've done for the organization. One that I can talk about in particular that I feel like I would term a little bit of my passion project. So um, coming from a nonprofit background, coming from a philosophy that we are partially here on this planet to leave it a better place than we found it um, for each other and for the next generation to come. One of the things that I found when I came to CCMS is that we did have medical students and residents as members of CCMS. But candidly, it's a free membership, and they were given an application and told them that would be good on their CV, and it's great networking, and it's free, so sign up. But then it stopped. And so when you look at our organization and you look at our community from a perspective of all of these issues that we've just briefly just touched on and just talking about really the tip of these issues— if you want these medical students to want to do a residency here, if you want people to want to do a residency here, if you want them to come to school and stay, which is ultimately our long-term goal and our long-term approach um, to coding and keeping our doctors here, then you need to engage them. You need to give them some sort of connection to our community that when they go through the matching program and they're looking at what residencies they want, we want Vegas, we want Nevada to be their first choice. And so I just mentioned to you earlier that since I've been with CCMS, we now have a medical student trustee on the board with full voting rights. That was not done before. That's a big deal. It's a huge commitment. Because that's a voice that needs to be heard. Absolutely. We have an aging population. We have a critical shortage of doctors. Doctors are burning out. They are aging out. Um, they, they themselves are trying to not only, in certain cases, expand their practices, staff their practices. Maybe they're looking to sell their practice at some point. They are not adequately staffed right now to handle the load that is there. And so part of what that investment and opening up and bringing the medical students in, they now have their own committee. They got to participate um, for the first time, from my understanding, um, at the annual Nevada State Medical Association annual meeting um, because we actually had a student and resident representative with alternate for the first time this past year. We have a resident on the board now as well. Um, we are building that segment. We're doing direct programming more and more for both of those. And those are long-term solutions but they're investments that we can't afford to not make today to pay off in dividends. That's a foundational change, and that's good. Kudos to you. Thank you. I'm really, really proud of it, and I think that it shows the commitment that our physicians have to this community, knowing that they're not always going to be the ones to be able to deliver the care and care for their patient, and that they understand that they need to have a role um, in helping to groom, encourage, educate, and support the next generation of physicians. That's big. Another change that we've seen is you're bringing your event planning experience into the fold. You've got a big event coming up, I believe uh, June? 
Yes, Saturday, June 1st. So I talk believe to you're some, coming, right? I, I've got it on my calendar. So okay, talk great. to us a little bit about your annual event and what goes on there. So Saturday, June 1st at the Bellagio will be our 65th installation dinner and award ceremony. Uh, the event has grown tremendously over the last few years. Um, this year will be the first time that we're at the Bellagio, and we really take this opportunity to showcase not only the success of our organization, but to really highlight um, the success of the physicians and their partners in the community to deliver the quality care that they do on a daily basis. So can I elaborate a yeah, little more? Yeah, go for it. So um, we give uh, our incoming and our outgoing presidents um, both give awards. They're called the President's Awards. Mm -hmm. So our outgoing president, Dr. Jeffrey Roth, is going to be bestowing an award on Carol Fisher and the Nathan Adelson Hospice, which is such a gem of our community. Oh, they do so much for this community. It's hard to really calculate. It, they're really, really incredible. And they do it as a nonprofit as yeah. well. So, um, you know, I think that they are a perfect example when people sometimes talk about Las Vegas not having quality care. They're definitely one of the first organizations that I show to, I, I you know, showcase and talk about how blessed we really are. Um, Dr. Daniel Burkhead is our incoming president, and Dr. Burkhead will be honoring Congresswoman Susie Lee um, for her efforts, not only on the education front that she has done over the years here as a former president of communities and schools, but certainly her work going to Washington and advocating for our residents. And then the one award that I am so excited about, which is such a natural fit for us this year, is uh, we have created a community service award for the Las Vegas Golden Knights. And uh, Go Knights, go! Absolutely. <laughs> one of the reasons that our doctors... Um, felt so passionate about this award is last year, as we all know, one October came. And before that, there was an old joke, and it's a really bad joke, so people should not repeat Don't it. Don't repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there was a misnomer that you couldn't get quality care in Las Vegas. And maybe that was true, you know, back in the day, but one October put that to bed in my opinion oh, absolutely it showed that we've got the finest trauma delivery system in the world not just in the state not just in the country but in the world doug i i can only speak for my experience on that day but my phone was ringing um as i'm sure yours was doctors that were here on the strip doctors that were from other areas that what can i do how can i help i'm i'm here at this property i'm already in town I can be there in an hour. What can I do? And we were tracking all these names and numbers, waiting to get the call of where to send these physicians. And, you know, I still sometimes get the chills, but that call never came. You know, Governor Sandoval was waiting to sign that executive yeah. order to bring in physicians. And our medical community, not just the physicians, but certainly our physicians at the helm, they rose to the occasion that, as you know, our community has since been studied the success. And um, the Vegas Knights, being Vegas born, they just knew who we were and how to bring us all together and give us something to not only um, take our mind off of and take that sorrow, but they've just jumped into this community as one of us and how they've honored the first responders and how they've worked with the medical community um, and so they have become a tremendous partner of ours. And so we're honored to be honoring them. And the honor is really all ours. Yeah, they've built a true sense of community here. Yes. And for those of you watching, um, last night was a fluke. They're coming back. Believe. <laughs> and I also see that you're going to pay tribute to the late Sandy Pelton, too. We are. Um, as you know, Sandy was uh, a recent board member of the Nevada State Board of Medical Examiners. She is a longtime supporter and advocate for physicians and the entire healthcare community. Um, it's really unfortunate that we lost her so early, um, but we are delighted that her son and her grandson will be in attendance to accept um, our gratitude and an honor um, to to have known her. Sandy was an amazing person. It's, I've worked with her over the years, and she was just so passionate about everything that she did. She was so passionate, but she was so successful. 
Absolutely. She just had that Midas touch and her passion was turned into action and she got results. And um, it's a shame that I didn't have as much opportunity being new to CCMS to see how much more she and I could have done together from a personal note. Um, but I actually had just seen her, I think it was two days before, the day before she passed actually, and we were making plans to have lunch and seeing how we could further collaborate. And uh, she had been a great resource um, to me since I had taken on this role and um, she will be sorely missed. And then Dr. George Alexander, you're going to recognize him? Yes, Dr. Alexander is uh, our 2019 Ficus Award winner. It's the Harold M. Ficus Award. It is the highest honor. Seems like you've got uh, kind of the rock star laundry list up there. Some of the most recognizable names in the medical community in Las Vegas live on this list. Yes. The, the thing about this award is that it is voted on by the previous award winners. It is peer-to-peer. It is all physicians. Dr. Alexander is a past president of ours. He is still engaged. I know we're going to talk about his baby coming up (laughs) in a few minutes, Um, so I don't want to give that away. Um, He was instrumental in uh, spearheading the building of the Clark County Medical Society Mm -hmm. campus with our brand new building that we just uh, started to occupy approximately two years ago, right before I started. And uh, he is a quiet but strong and committed and dedicated leader. And uh, not only is CCMS lucky to have him, but our community is lucky to have him. Yeah, he's been amazing. Another great product of the Air Force that decided to stay here in Las Vegas, I believe. Yes, it's actually interesting that you say that because I'd be curious if you looked at some of these awards winners for this particular candidate, how many of them come. I've already recognizing a few names. Yes. Quite a few came out of the Air Force. So let's talk about what Dr. Alexander has built with this Winged Heart Awards. This is really what we want to focus on a bit, but we wanted to get the background. So tell us a little bit about the Winged Heart Awards. Yeah, so Dr. Alexander realized a number of years ago, I believe it is 2013, um, that physicians don't operate in a silo, no pun intended, that they know that it takes a village for them to be able to deliver the care and the successful outcomes that they do. So a number of years ago, he went to the board and said he wanted to start the Winged Heart Awards and that that would be an opportunity to bring the community in, but to also build bridges with their medical uh, delivery partners, um, the nurses, and the medical healthcare-related nonprofits. So for the past few years, they've been doing the Winged Heart Awards. Every year, it's an award program where the community actually gets to nominate a nurse or a healthcare organization that is based here locally that has gone above and beyond. So as we were discussing earlier, at last year's event, I had only come on board um, July of 17, sat down with Dr. Alexander in September of 17, and wanted to learn a little bit more about the Winged Heart Awards, how I could help. And really get to know him as a leader of our organization, but also of our community. And in that conversation, we decided to add the first responder category for the first time for the 2018 Winged Heart Awards, not knowing that literally a few weeks later, we would have one October. So it wasn't in response to one October, but the timing couldn't have been more serendipitous. So now the Winged Heart Awards... Um, bestow an award on uh, the first responder category, nurse, healthcare, medical-related nonprofit. And those nominations can be submitted through our website. Um, They need to be local candidates. And um, then there's a small committee within the Clark County Medical Society physicians that will determine the award winner. And it is for those, those individuals that have gone above and beyond in their role, like I said, either as a nurse, nonprofit, healthcare. So last year you honored or awarded Dr. or I'm sorry, Charleston Hartfield, not quite a doctor, but should have been. Uh, So talk to us a little bit about the importance of this and uh, why I also (laughs) slipped on doctor. 
Um, so like I said, last year we added the first responder category. The photo that you can see right here is actually Dr. George Alexander and the late officer Charleston Hartfield's family accepting the first ever Winged Heart Award for a first responder category member ever. Um, the beauty of this photo is that for those of you watching, um, and Doug, you probably recall, Doctor, uh, sorry, I'm now I'm so going with the doctor thing. It. <laughs> it's contagious. Officer Hartfield was the officer who was off duty at Route 91 and in trying to save lives at the concert, lost his own. And so we got a number of nominees in this particular category, as you can imagine, um, but there was no greater sacrifice than what he did that day. And um, the one thing that uh, I learned that day um, as the family had arrived and I greeted them at the event and went to introduce them to Dr. Alexander is that uh, Officer Hartfield's son actually is an aspiring physician himself. So That's why I kept slipping doctor because that gives me chills. I but, have uh, the chills now. so. Um, I made sure that day to introduce um, uh, their son to a couple of our leadership doctors to build those relationships and let him know that he can achieve any of his dreams and that we certainly need him in our community. Um, you know, physicians are a rare breed. Um, it is a calling to do what they do, and in particular under circumstances like 1 October and some of the things that they see on a daily basis. When that video was shown um, at our event to honor Officer Hartfield and have his family come up, I don't think there was a dry eye in the place. There was no one not on their feet, and um, it's why we do what we do. That's right. So. It's a pretty big deal, these awards. How does somebody from the community nominate somebody for a Winged Heart Awards? It's a great question. Um, so if they go to the Clark County Medical Society website, it is www.clarkcountymedical.org. If you scroll under events, um, I don't think this is the initial screen uh, right now on our website, but I know that is in process. But if you go right under events, it says uh, Winged Heart, and you can go right there and click on a little black button that says Submit Nomination. It is super easy. A number of uh, our partner organizations have it on their website as well. Yep. So, again, for the 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 audience out there, what are the categories? And once again, if you want to repeat where they could go to nominate, because that's what we really want to accomplish. Absolutely. Today. So uh, you can nominate a first responder. It can be fire. It can be um, paramedic. It can be police. Um, someone that is officially in that category where they put themselves on the line every day here locally. Um, the second category is nurse. And the third one is a medical or healthcare related nonprofit here locally in our community. And the simplest way to do a nomination is to go to our own website at www.clarkcountymedical.org. Go under events, you'll see the Winged Heart Awards and uh, the nomination process is pretty quick. Very good. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show and giving us a little bit more information about the Clark County Medical Society your annual conference or your annual dinner and the Winged Heart Awards. Uh, but we've got to bring the episode to a close, but we're definitely going to have you back on the show in the near future. I so appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. Yeah, you bet. For those of you that are joining us, again, you could see us online on the website, on our YouTube channel, all the various channels. And we look forward to seeing you next week right here in the studio for another edition of Inside Medicine.